And it's alright if you don't get rid of all the saw marks on your first pass. Usually won't happen anyways. Today is just not my day. There we go. That's what I like to see. That's that's the thinner edge doing that to me. So that's why it's crucial to have a strong edge. what we have for the per first pass. Get rid of the, any of the fingernail flakes you see so you don't cut yourself on them. And we're going to start by following this ridge. We barely have one but we'll see how it goes. So it worked. So that set us, that gave us another ridge right here we can follow. And hopefully we'll be getting rid of all the saw marks on the first pass here. That makes it way easier. Oops. But, you know, sometimes it just doesn't happen, so... It's not the end. I can move on. And sometimes the flakes will fan out and take care of it for you, like it did there. You have to be very, very, very careful with obsidian. If you apply the wrong kind of force to the stone, it's going to snap in half on you. I think I have a little bit of an isolated platform here that helped me out. And it didn't really do what I wanted. Neither did that. So now for the ends. This part is always very, very crucial, but a very delicate operation flicking the end. Keep in mind I'm squeezing it side to side and absorbing all the shock that goes into the stone and it's all going into my hand and we got rid of all the saw marks on this side so now we need to flake the end on this side If you hit it and the flake doesn't go, you ha you're doing something wrong that's going to break the stone. So you adjust, and if it still doesn't want to go, then you really need to be careful because you're dealing shock into the stone that the stone doesn't really want. And so this is what we have now. So now I need to turn the edge and... Uh, put the edge basically in the center line so you can see the difference this side of the stone is flat but this side is really curved so I want to put the same amount of curve convexity on both sides of the stone so I can take flakes either which way I want I only want to take flakes where the stone really needs it so if I put the edge in the center Wherever it's thicker, wherever the stone's thicker, 
I will have a platform all ready for me without even having to try to make a platform. And I'll show you what I mean by that after I uh, get the edge made up here. And at this point, this is the point where I put the tip on the piece, get it roughed in, and all I use for that is a hammer stone. So decide where you want the tip. I'd benefit from putting the tip on this end because we have saw marks here. Just a little spot right there. So it'll make it easier to get into that area. Make sure to squeeze the stone, but don't apply any bending stress. So all the shock gets absorbed into your hand instead of ringing through the stone. Because that is what usually causes it to break. And these are not thinning flakes because I want the entire piece to be the same, the same thickness. I take them from the other side. I'm just brushing up against the edge here. I also don't want to make any step fractures. Yeah, I think I'll deal with that, with pressure flaking from this point on. And then we will take off some more indirect percussion flakes. And uh, I'll show you guys what that looks like when we're done. Well, I got bad news, guys. I was pressure flaking, and the thing just snapped in half. And that is because my thumb was right here and I was applying bending force and I flaked right there and it snapped in half. So it's good it's a good thing to be able to identify what you were doing wrong. So next time I won't put my thumb right where I'm flaking. Because I nap on my leg, you have to be able to hold it down. I might actually use my entire hand to hold it down from this point on. So I'm gonna carry on with this piece and I'm just gonna work the tip. I'll put this other piece aside for a rainy day and the first thing I have to do is zigzag the base and then take a couple thinning flakes and then we'll be good. Alright, so I zigzagged the base now. I have all the edges ground and we're ready to carry on as if and nothing ever happened. I need to find my mallet, there it is. So first things first, we have a little tiny bit of saw marks left, so I'll get rid of that. And I also switched to a smaller flaker. I uh, stop using the really big one right after I get rid of all the saw marks. I think I made a pretty good edge right there. Hmm. It's a safe place to hit really hard so I'll keep going. There it goes. So there's that. I have a spot right next to it.
and if you space your flakes out pretty far apart instead of going in a series in a row you can make a pretty nice looking flake pattern I decided not to uh, take the, my edge to the center that time because I had to establish a little more convexity on that side. But generally if everything's going smoothly, that's what I do. I just grind the edge both ways and the stone will set up all the platforms you need. It's, it's exactly that simple and I'll show you what I mean here. So I'll grind it this way. Now I'll grind it this way. And the stone will give you all the platforms you need. Wherever it's thicker you'll have a platform perfectly set up. Grind this way. Grind the other way now. Make sure your edge is kind of centered. This is what I mean. I brought my edge to center and I have a low spot here, high spot here, high spot here, low spot there. That's where I need to take flakes. That's where the stone is thicker. And the stone automatically sets you up for it. So now I grind the stone really heavily. go. So find all your low spots and take a flick. 